Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding why the timing will never be right. Take action regardless. The truth of the matter is there is no ideal time to do anything in life. Life has a way of constantly being perpetually filled with work, family, social activities, errands, the list continues. Oftentimes, we keep telling ourselves, I'll start tomorrow or next week when I'm less busy. And guess what happens? Your calendar keeps filling up and you continue to stay busy for months and years to come. Successful people understand this one important principle. The time will never be right or ideal. They promptly take action on their goals or desires, despite their busy schedule, and don't let excuses get in the way of achieving their goals. The reality is, if you want something bad enough, you'll find time to make it happen, regardless of how busy you are. The next time you find yourself procrastinating or waiting for your schedule to be ideal in order to take action on an important task or something you've dreamt of, remind yourself that the time is now to make it happen. As the saying goes, tomorrow never comes, it's always today. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. For our viewers that don't know what TIFF is, what is it and you know what does it mean to the city of Toronto? Well, it's one of the largest festivals, film festivals in the world, and it's actually the largest public film festival in the world. So when you think about the largest, which is probably Con, um, Toronto is right up there. Uh, the Cannes Film Festival isn't a public festival, whereas Toronto is. And so it's it's accessible to everyone. We get over 700,000 uh, people that come to the city to attend the film festival, which is pretty uh, exciting. And I think it's one of the only fil film festivals of its size where you have the Q&As during the premieres. Mm. So it's pretty cool. You have the talent that comes in, you get to ask questions uh, during the screening. And sometimes, and I would say even most of the time, the films aren't even completed yet. Mm. And so mm. it's kind of cool to be able to, to see that. And then from an economic perspective, I mean, I think it brings in um, about $200 million um, to uh, the city uh, during that you know, 10, 11 day time frame. So it's, um, it's very important uh, certainly from an economic standpoint as well. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have Toronto business mogul, Natasha Kaufman Hendricks, who leads one of the leading PR companies in Canada, NKPR. With over 20 years of experience in celebrating the Toronto International Film Festival through various events and PR initiatives, she joins us today to discuss what we can expect from this year's TIFF Festival. Natasha, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I feel great. I feel energized and exhausted all at the same time. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can imagine you're a very, very busy woman. I mean, Tip is just around the corner, so it's going to be crazy. I can't even believe it's September already. But, you know, for our viewers that don't know what Tip is, what is it? And, you know, what does it mean to the city of Toronto? Well, it's one of the largest festivals, film festivals in the world, and it's actually the largest public film festival in the world. So when you think about the largest, which is probably Cannes, um, Toronto is right up there. Uh, the Cannes Film Festival isn't a public festival, whereas Toronto is. And so it's, it's accessible to everyone. We get over 700,000 uh, people that come to the city to attend the film festival, which is pretty uh, exciting. And I think it's one of the only fil film festivals of its size where you have the Q and A's during the premieres. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool. You have the talent that comes in, you get to ask questions uh, during the screening. And sometimes, and I would say even most of the time, the films aren't even completed yet. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it's kind of cool to be able to, to see that. And then from an economic perspective, I mean, I think it brings in um, about $200 million um, to uh, the city uh, during that, you know, 10, 11 day time frame. So it's um, it's very important, uh, certainly from an economic standpoint as well. 
Yeah, of course. And you know what? The most thing that people are excited about are, of course, the celebrities, uh, people like Brad Pitt, Jennifer Lopez in past years. So what are some celebrities or who are some celebrities that are coming into the city? Well, you have Viola Davis that's coming in. You have Zac Efron that's going to be coming in this year. Um, it, it, I mean, it, you kind of, you name the celebrity, they are definitely going to be here. I think Jessica Chastain is in town as well. Uh, there's a whole list. But I think what's what I find really cool about the film festival is um, all of the really interesting and cool documentaries that you might not necessarily uh, know about or that you might not see for a while. And so, you know, there's um, a documentary, for example, that I'm super excited to see called Black Ice. And that's uh, produced by Renee Vermani and Drake and LeBron. And so you have these huge names and, and powerhouses um, that are, you know, coming together to create something that's, you know, super meaningful and, and um, giving us an opportunity to get, get a glimpse into history. And so it certainly it's about like the really big names, but it's also about, um, you know, the directors, producers uh, that are trying to put a work, a piece of work out there uh, that will become, you know, part of um, history. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about TIFF. There are so many different screenings, movies, international. I mean, I've already gotten so many invites for screenings and there's hundreds of them, right? And there's the star-studded ones, there's the small ones. So I love that. There's so much diversity um, in TIFF. And you know, your PR agency hosts so many star-studded events from Artists for Peace and Justice, uh, Best Buddies Gala, there's so many. So what is your favorite event and why? <laughs> well, ours, <laughs> um, I, I would say, I, I mean, there's so many. I am really excited about the Toronto Life um, Hello Party. That's sort of the kickoff to Film Festival, which is happening on the Thursday night, the September 8th. And um, you're going to see sort of the best of Canadiana at uh, that event. I'm looking forward to obviously Artists for Peace and Justice. That's an event that we've been hosting now for uh, 14 years and we've helped raise over $33 million uh, with that specific event because we started it during the Toronto Film Festival just before the earthquake hit in Haiti. Um, and we helped build um, uh, the first free high school in Haiti because of all the funds that are raised during that time. Um, and I'm excited, uh, one of, um, my dear friend Dax De Silva has a film at the uh, has a film during the festival called Caught, um, and it's about um, us being mindful of what is happening in the ocean, and that um, we're basically, um, you know, in many ways, uh, by fishing and killing the fish in the oceans, we're actually um, killing the ocean and all also um, ruining the environment and so I, I think that um, and I'm looking forward to that screening and looking forward to that event and so I just think when I uh, think about the film festival and think about all the um, uh, events and films that are part of it it's the really sort of meaningful ones that mm -hmm. I look forward to uh, because it's that opportunity to um, shine a spotlight on things that really matter. Uh, during a time when there's this incredible lens on on our city and an incredible lens on um, on film. Mm -hmm. And and speaking of meaningful, I know that Artists for Peace and Justice, um, you guys have raised over $33 million to date. Um, and as you said, it's not just about a star-studded um, guest list, it's also about raising money for an important cause. So why was this an important cause for you? And tell us a little bit more about it. So Artists for Peace and Justice, we started uh, like I said, 14 years ago, and it was before the earthquake hit in Haiti. Um, uh, a few of my celebrity friends had just come back from Haiti, and they were telling me about, I was in LA, and they were telling me about their trip. And they said, you won't believe it. There are families that are living on a dollar a day in, uh, in Haiti, and it's so impoverished. And I had never heard that. And then the more they told me, the more I realized, wow, like Haiti is just two hours away from Toronto. It's the other side of the Dominican. And I just felt that, you know what, we should use this as an opportunity when we have all, you know, so much talent in the city uh, to fundraise. And so I did the very first fundraiser uh, that year. It was just before the earthquake hit in Haiti. And we barely raised $50,000 because most people didn't even know where Haiti was. Mm -hmm. Fast forward six months later, uh, the devastating earthquake that killed hundreds of thousands of people. 
um, uh, hit Haiti and we realized we need to do something. We need to do more. And so we did a fundraiser in Los Angeles just after the earthquake um, and we raised just over four and a half million dollars. People like Nicole Kidman and Josh Brolin and Barbara Streisand, Demi Moore, Ben Stiller, Susan Sarandon, um, Madeline Stowe, we all came together and we raised four and a half million dollars. And the first thing that we did was we bought land in Haiti um, and we partnered with St. Luke's Foundation. We built the very first free high school um, in Haiti because they don't have free education beyond junior high. And so we very much believe that in order to help the Haitian people help themselves, um, education was the way to go. And we, um, we funded the school and now, you know, uh, so many years later, we thought that we were going to have about 500 students in our school. We have 3,000 students in our school. We've had many graduating classes, and um, our signature event during the film festival is one of our biggest fundraisers, where we have raised over 33 million. And so, uh, it's definitely an event I look forward to. And this year, we're honoring Eric McCormick for all of his philanthropic work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, most people remember him from Will and Grace. Uh, but he's a, a Canadian icon mm -hmm. and we're also honoring Dax Da Silva as a change maker um, because he's done so much for, for conservation and um, he just pledged um, 40 million dollars to conservation projects uh, all over the world and he's Canadian. Mm -hmm. And so we really want to use it as an opportunity. We use this event as an opportunity to highlight um, incredible um, humans, not just Canadians, but certainly both Eric and Dax are Canadian. Um, and um, use them as examples of uh, people that are doing incredible work out there and giving them themselves to be able to create a better world. And um, uh, I'm excited for APJ uh, this year and I look forward to it um, every year. Mm -hmm. And this is off the topic of TIFF, but speaking of creating a better world, um, what I do love about you is that, you know, you attend these nice events, you host these nice events, but you're also about giving back to the community. I know you also have an in initiative called um, Acts of Kindness. So so let's talk about that briefly. I started 20, it's 20 hours of kindness, and I started it years ago because I very much wanted my team to understand the importance of giving back and giving of themselves. And so with 20 hours of kindness, what we do is we spend 20 consecutive hours, the entire team giving back. They get to choose their charities of choice. Um, they create the initiatives and we give back to the community. And it's interesting because over the years I've had uh, team members say to me, you know, thank you so much for that experience. Like as an example, when we um, donated our time at St. Felix Center and we made uh, breakfast and we made lunch um, uh, for uh, the homeless. And I remember one person, you know, years ago had said to me, thank you so much for this opportunity because I don't think I would have ever seen this side of our community and understood the need. And um, since then he's continued to volunteer there as well. And so that's why I started it. I just really feel that we should all want to leave this world a better place than we came into it. And we can't do it, you know, individually. We have to come together to um, make the impact that we want to see. And so that's why I created 20 Hours of Kindness. I love that. You know, I think that's so important about giving back um, and, you know, using your platform to inspire. I mean, that's why I created this platform is to inspire, to uplift, to showcase success stories. So I really like that. We're going to go back into that in just a little bit. But I want to talk about TIFF. I want to talk about, you know, your PR agency. I know that you guys host various events during TIFF. So what are some events that you guys are hosting this year? So uh, Toronto Life Hello Party, like mm -hmm. I said, is one of the biggest um, events during TIFF. So we definitely have that. I mentioned Artists for Peace and Justice Gala, which is always a hot ticket. We sold out of that event within the first 48 hours. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very small, intimate um, uh, event with just over 100 people. Um, uh, Monday night, we have Caught, which is with Dax Da Silva. And, um, and honestly, this year, I'm excited to see some movies. Uh, we also have the It House. That's the other thing that we're um, doing, and that's back. We haven't done the It House in two years because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And so this is our uh, first year back in a couple of years. And so we're launching that from September 8th to the 10th. And what that is, is a series of activations for um, our clients. So as an example, Joseph Rickhoff is going to be hosting a really cool 360 uh, 
uh, portrait experience and video experience. We've partnered with Hello Magazine to do uh, portraits with Joseph Ripkoff. So some of the coolest sort of red carpet looks that you're going to see out there. Um, well, most of the people will be wearing Joseph Ripkoff and they will be integrated into our uh, portrait studio, Hello Portrait Studio as well. And you'll be able to see a lot of those pictures both digitally and in book. So there's some really fun activations um, that we're doing. And I thought this year, like when we look at pulling together our list of brands that will be part of that experience, um, this year we really focused on Canadiana and Canadian mm -hmm. brands, shining a spotlight on uh, Canadian brands that are really making an impact and also shining a spotlight on international brands that are creating uh, waves and impact here in Canada. And so that's how we went through the selection process of the brands that are activating during the It House. Mm, very nice. I've been to the It House before. It's a great, um, there's so many different brands and, and I love it. I know you guys used to have the Producers Ball as well. Um, I, I think the It House and Producers Ball, um, there's a there's an affiliation, right, between the two? Always. We always yeah. sit them together. <laughs> this year we didn't do the Producers Ball. We're just going to have the It House. Um, partially because I think we just wanted to see, we just haven't done this in a couple of years. Yeah. So for us, it was just like, you know, let's let's not do all of it. Let's do um, some of it. And it's kind of cool because we're doing the It House this year. I don't know if you heard, but I have a building that's going up with my name yes, on it, a 47-story condominium yes. project. Mm -hmm. um, and before we break ground on that project, um, we're hosting the It House uh, there at Natasha the Residences. Very nice. Um, we'll talk about that in just a second, but you know what? There are hundreds of screenings during TIFF. What are your top three picks for movies that you want to watch this year? Well, I'm excited for Black Ice, as I had mentioned. Um, the Beer Run is another one with Zac Efron that I'm looking forward to because that's also based on a true story. Um, and so, I mean, those are the big, uh, big ones that are on my list. I don't get to see a lot of movies during the film festival, but definitely those two. And Caught, I'm looking forward to seeing Caught. Um, uh, that's done by Age of Union. I believe Viola Davis is in town as well, and so. Um, her film um, I'm going to try and catch but it's tough because we're so busy during the film festival that we often don't have an opportunity to see the films but I would say those are definitely the ones that are on my list. Mm -hmm. And you know the one great thing about TIFF is every year you host uh, a TIFF countdown party at your residence um, so what is the highlight for you I know you've been doing this for over 18 years right hosting that party so what is the highlight of that event for you? I think the biggest thing with that event that I love is watching everybody come together mm -hmm. because once you're in the festival, like once it starts, we're all really exhausted and yeah. everyone's so busy. Like you were talking about all the red carpets that you're doing, like yeah. it's just a lot. And so that event is almost like the calm before the storm. Yeah. And so everyone's really excited to see each other. Um, it almost feels like the end of summer, you know, big tiff. Uh, kickoff. So, and it was exciting this year, um, especially because we just haven't done it in a couple of years. Um, so we really uh, enjoyed putting that one on. And yeah, I can't believe it. It's 18 years and two years we'll have our 20th um, of that event, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And you speaking about 20th, I know that you celebrated your 20th anniversary for NKPR. Congratulations. That's a huge, huge milestone. <laughs> Um, and I created this this platform to inspire, to uplift, and to showcase success stories. So I want to ask you, what are some obstacles that you kind of faced in this industry, and how did you get through it? I don't know if there's obstacles. I mean, you know, um, I just find like you're always learning, and it's not an obstacle, but you have to be open to the learning. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's like sometimes one you know one step forward, two steps back. You have to be open to all of that, and you have to always think about what's the lesson in uh, why things are happening. You know, I can think about some uh, some situations like during film festival that didn't necessarily go quite my way, but I remember making certain decisions and choices um, because you know when you're your back sort of against the wall, you have to you have to decide. Um, and for me, I think if I look at my learnings over the last 20 years, it's just being open to growth. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. often what happens, I think, is um, learning growth, you know, moments of, you know, fear can be debilitating. 
And so you have to work through the fear. I have a tattoo on my uh, forearm that says, be brave. And it's, it's there because sometimes you have to make those really brave decisions. And so for me in the last 20 years, I think that's probably one of the biggest learnings is just be brave. When you feel that sense of fear, you just have to work through it. Um, that's when you're experiencing growth and you can't get to 20 years without growth. And so you yeah. just have to be open to all of it mm -hmm. and, and change, right? Because if you think of the last 20 years, when I first started NKPR, email was just starting to be a thing. Social media didn't even exist. And you think about how much we use those tools now. So it's, you know, part of, um, I think being around for 60 years is really about embracing change. Um, and knowing how your business needs to adapt to that. Mm -hmm. I like that you said open to growth. I think that's so important. The word open is because, you know, sometimes when people reach the pinnacle of success, they think they know everything, but to be successful, you have to keep growing, evolving and learning. So I like that you said that. And I also like that you said to stay brave because you know, successful people are scared, but they push through the fear, right? Anyways, we're all afraid sometimes. We just have to push through the fear and get through it. And um, that's what makes us grow as a person. So I love that. Well, and define what does, you know, the pinna pinnacle of success mean, right? Because I always think like, I'm not sure I'll ever get to a place where I feel like, oh my gosh, I know it all. Like, yeah. I feel like I've like reached it. I feel yeah. like I'm always learning and I'm always growing. And I'm not sure what, what I would consider being sort of the pinnacle of success and I think that's part of it right because yeah. you're just always in this growth you know phase and stage um and just that constant state of learning so that constant state of openness is key mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you so much, Natasha, for being on the show today. I will see you around TIFF uh, <laughs> and enjoy the festival. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook. Hey, you can fly higher than the sky.